today? What are we celebrating today? Pentecost. Yes, Pentecost. We celebrate the gift of God's Spirit in Pentecost. Welcome to all of you gathered here in the church and for those of you gathered from home. We celebrate God's abiding presence in the Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. God is always with us. Always. Jesus is always with us. God's Spirit is always with us. Let's pause for a moment now to give thanks for the many ways that God, the Spirit, Jesus, has been present to us this past week, and let us give thanks. Now remembering that we are loved and that we sometimes fall short in following Jesus' commandment to love one another, 
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess of the ways we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. For the times we have not loved you with our whole heart and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Together let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this Spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us the courage to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the, the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in this one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Let us recite Psalm 104 responsively by half verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. The creatures are small and great. There move the ships, and there is at Leviathan which you have made for the sword of it. All of them look to you. You give it them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with the good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew 
May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Be seated. Have you been busy lately? <laughs> oh, right away. I huh? could get a response to that one. Busyness. I've had a really busy week. A lot going on. Uh, getting, getting ready for our um, year of renewal sessions and planning that goes around that this week that, that happened and then um, getting ready for the walk. We have the walk for the homeless and the organization that has happened around that and making sure that that's all, all set and, and ready to go. And, and planning for the bishop's visitation, which happens two weeks from today. And so I actually had a, a Zoom meeting with, with Bishop Allen to get ready for today. So we're starting to look ahead, already looking at two weeks from now in this service amidst everything else that's going on. And then right in the mid middle of that, we had an election of a bishop yesterday. Right? A wonderful time together in celebration, community, and appreciation for me of the Episcopal Church and how leaders are chose within the Episcopal Church. A lot different from my Roman Catholic days. We would have just waited 
for the Pope to send an announcement who that bishop would be. But we have a voice in that. And we pray together and we sang together. I don't know how many songs we sang together uh, about the Holy Spirit and asking the Spirit to guide us. And, and through that process, you know, we have our bishop-elect Julia Whitworth. Busy. A lot going on. Last night, I, I, after I finally got home last night, I, I just found I was so tired, exhausted. And then I, I remembered advice that I've given so often. Dan, breathe. <laughs> breathe. Take a deep breath. That's healing and life-giving, to breathe. Focus on your breathing. When we get busy, running in many different directions, stop and breathe. Focus on your breath. Take a deep breath. Just do that for a minute, and it makes a big difference. When we're fear-filled, whatever that fear might be, breathe. Breathe in God's spirit. Breathe in God's life. Breathe in God's love and live in that moment. When we get anxious about things, worried about things, breathe. Breathe in God's spirit. Breathe in God's life. Breathe in God's love and just live in that moment. Whatever's capturing us in life at different times, don't forget to breathe. The disciples, we have this passage, which we, we heard this the Sunday after Easter, and we have a, just an excerpt of that passage we had after Easter today on Pentecost, because it's a Pentecost event in John's Gospel here. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? But it happens soon after Jesus' crucifixion, and they're all gathered in the upper room on the first day of the week, symbolic Sunday. <laughs> they're all gathered together then, and they're in fear, uncertainty about the future without Jesus. I can't imagine the anxiety around that and the mourning around that. Their hearts are broken and they're confused. And here on this first day of the week, on Sunday, they're gathered together to remember Jesus and, and this time Jesus appears to them. He is made known to them. They experience his presence. And what are his words to these fear-filled, confused disciples that are probably anxious about the future, heartbroken? His words to them are, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Take a breath, folks. Breathe. Peace, that word peace, of course, it doesn't translate well from the, what Jesus really would have said was shalom. And it means much more than we understand peace. We think of that as absence of war, but there's so much more to that than that. And Jesus and his ministry was about shalom. It was about, it was about healing. It was about restoring wholeness to people in their broken lives. And it was a greeting, a common greeting, shalom, right? We hear now our Jewish... Uh, siblings of shalom, right? Wholeness. It's a greeting of wholeness, our desire for a person to be whole. Jesus embodied that in his life, shalom. His ministry was all about shalom. It was all about restoring wholeness to people who were broken. And so Jesus appearing to his disciples, when he said to them, shalom, they knew it was him because he was shalom. He knew what they needed. Shalom, Jesus says to us. And the first thing he does after that, right? After he said peace twice, shalom twice, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. He's empowering them. 
turning over his ministry to them. And then what does he do? He breathed on them. <laughs> Seems kind of strange to say that, especially coming out of COVID, right? <laughs> He breathed on them. There's symbolism in that. Remember in creation, what does God do? He breathes life, right? Breathes life. Jesus is breathing life back into them symbolically. Breath. Breathe, people. Don't forget to breathe. Breathe in the Spirit. Breathe in God's and God's love and God's life. Breathe it in. Remind yourself over and over again, just breathe, Dan. Just breathe. Well, you can use your own name. <laughs> just breathe. Let God in. Don't become so anxious and fear-filled that you're, 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 you just become constricted. You just kind of like this. And you can't even breathe fully. You've been there, huh? Breathe. Breathe in the Spirit. Let the Spirit fill you. God is still with us. Jesus is with us. The Spirit is with us. The same Spirit that was within Jesus. Yes, the same one. No different. The same Spirit that was within Jesus, that allowed him to love and to show compassion and mercy and bring justice to this world. That same spirit is within us if we just let it in. Breathe. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I encourage you to breathe deeply the spirit. Let it in. Let it into your heart that might be broken in some way or distracted, in your, in, your, in your mind that might be filled with anxiety and fear, breathe in the Spirit. Breathe deeply of the Spirit. Let the Spirit reside within you to, to strengthen you, to heal you, to take you by the hand and lead you. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to renew our baptismal vows and then I'm going to invite you to come forward to receive an anointing as a renewal of the Holy Spirit in your life. Um, so let's first stand and renew our baptismal promises. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are raised with Christ to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce the powers of evil and all its works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? 
and will God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect and restore the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to come forward to receive this anointing. And as you do so, you don't need to say anything. Just come with an open spirit, open mind, heart, and breathe in God's spirit. 